OK, we're going to look at uh, a process called integration. Now, um, depending on which uh, exam board you're doing, you may find that uh, the uh, integration is not in core one, but it's in core two. So, so bear that in mind when you're uh, doing your revision. Now, integration is basically the reverse of differentiation. So integration is the reverse of differentiation. Okay, remember that it's the reverse of differentiation. So what do I mean by that? I'm not going to tell you what's in there. What I am going to tell you is if I now differentiate what's in there, I get 3x squared. Can you now tell me what was in there? I'm sure there's a shower of hands going up saying, yes, we know what was in there. It must have been x cubed. Because you've already learnt the rule that if you differentiate x cubed, then you get 3x squared. Bring down the 3, take 1 off the power. Now, of course, I'm now going to say to you, you're actually all incorrect. Because I could have had x cubed plus 10 in there. I could have had x cubed plus 1,000 in there, and so on. So the first thing about this topic is just be careful not to be deceived by what you might first of all think. Now we'll worry about that number in a minute. And really, yes, you are all right. It is basically x cubed that I differentiated. So now let's forget that the first line is there. So if I said to you, OK, if dy by dx equals 3x squared, find y, then your answer would be y equals x cubed. I'm going to say to you, it isn't quite that. It could be x cubed plus any number. And we sort of usually denote this any number by c. And so this is plus a constant. So the word constant just means any number. And we don't know what it is. Now the process of going from here to here is called integration. Let's try another one. So if I give you dy by dx equals x to the 5, what did I differentiate to get that? Well, this isn't quite so easy because this is not an answer that you're used to seeing. What answer might you be used to seeing? Well, you might be used to seeing 6x to the 5. And that would have been differentiating x to the power 6. So we could say, well, I think it's something to do with x to the 6. But if I differentiate x to the 6, I get 6 times what I actually want. So if I reverse the process, I need 1 sixth of that to produce the right answer. Because if I said to you now, differentiate 1 6 x to the 6, then of course you'd get uh, that dy by dx was 
equal to 1 6, bring down the 6, x to the 5, and then a 6 times a 6 gives you 1, plus c. If we had dy by dx equal to x to the n, then y would be what? Well, let's look at the sort of thing that's happening here. The, the first thing we notice is that the power goes up by 1, 5 to 6, 2 to 3. So the power here is going to go up to n plus 1. Now this one we didn't have to worry because this was a recognizable one. Now let's look at what happened here. We had to divide it by 6. Where does that 6 come from? It's the actual power here. So if I start with x to the n the power becomes n plus 1 so I need to divide by n plus 1. plus c. Okay, so if dy by dx equals x to the n, then y equals 1 over n plus 1 times x to the power n plus 1 plus c. And that process is called integration. And it's the rule for integrating x to the n on its own. So I can summarize that so far by saying then that if I integrate x to the n I will get 1 over n plus 1 x to the n plus 1 plus this mysterious c which always needs to be there because we don't know what it is. Okay let's just write that in words then so I've just said then that if I integrate x to the n, it gives 1 over n plus 1, x to the n plus 1, plus c. OK, let's make it just a little bit harder. Let's put a number in front of this. So what happens if dy by dx equals... 7x to the 4. Okay, well we say to ourselves that means then that y, what does it come from? Well, let's not worry about that 7, let's leave it there. x to the 4 must have come from x to the 5. But that would have given me a 5 there as well, which isn't there so I need to divide it by 5 plus c. So the effect of the 7 is neither here nor there really, it, it remains here, it remains as a multiple of 7. So if I had dy by dx equal to k times x to the n, where would that have come from? Well, it would have come from k over n plus 1, x to the n plus 1, plus c. And so I can now say if I integrate k x to the n, this gives an answer of k over n plus 1, x to the n plus 1, plus c. Now writing this in words is uh, rather long-winded. And we have a symbol for this whole phrase of integrate x to the n or integrate k x to the n. And the symbol is known as an integration sign. 
Again, let's fence off a little bit of this board here. And the symbol is a bit like an elongated S. So that in elongated S says integrate. So integrate x to the n is written like that. Now it isn't quite written like that. I have to slip in a dx. Now the dx, remember I said to you that dy by dx doesn't mean a fraction dy divided by dx. So that just to suddenly make the dx appear there, that looks a bit dodgy, doesn't it, really? Well, I did warn you at one, uh, in one lesson that there are times where we do split this up. Um, but in a sense, it's a, a warning sign written here. It's not really part of the process. It's just telling you that the letter that you're messing around with is x. So if you like, dx means integrate, but make sure you do it with x. Okay, so it's not going to take part in the process. It's a warning as to what's going on. And so this says if I integrate x to the n, making sure that I do it with respect to x, it gives equals this, 1 over n plus 1 x to the n plus 1 plus c. And so summarising the more general one, if I integrate kx to the n with respect to x, I get k over n plus 1, x to the n plus 1 plus c. The plus c is not known. And for, that, uh, for this reason, this is called an indefinite integration process. So this is indefinite, uh, let's spell it correctly, indefinite integration. And often the noun, the answer is called an integral. So the whole thing is often referred to as an integral. So the process is integration the thing you're working on is called an integral. And that's the answer to the integral, or that's the answer to the integration. So the whole thing is called an integral. Now integration is um, a very, very difficult uh, concept once we develop it. And uh, even in core four, you will get some quite tough uh, uh, examples to do, but uh, that that's for, for next year. Um, the work we'll do this year, the integration, uh, it, it remains fairly basic. Now, as with the differentiation, which we've done quite a lot of now, um, the rules do not depend on n being a positive integer. The examples I've shown you, um, to make it easy, I've always made uh, the value of n a positive integer. But um, it doesn't have to be a positive integer. So that this rule here, um, this rule here, are true whatever the value of n is. And, and, and in the next lesson, we'll start to look at uh, some examples where n isn't necessarily a whole number. OK. So let's have a look at this one. So solve x plus 2x equals 12. So what do you think you do first? Okay, well, I want x on its own. So I would put x equals 12 minus 2x. Okay, so a lot of the time we want to get x by itself. But what we want to do first is get all of these x's together. So can you see anything we can do with this? Get all these together in one place. Oh, okay, it's 3x, isn't it? Yeah, so absolutely. So 3x equals 12. Oh, and so x equals 4. Brilliant, spot on, well done.